Sky Watchers, and welcome to the sky above us. I'm James Albury, and I'm your tour guide to the night sky. On Monday, April 8th, North America will experience a total solar eclipse. This is the second total solar eclipse we've seen in North America since 2017. And you'll want to experience this one because the next total solar eclipse over this much of North America won't be for another 21 years. What am I talking about? Let me show you. Both Earth and the Moon cast two shadows, a darker inner shadow called the umbra and a lighter outer shadow called the penumbra. When the Moon is in the new phase and it passes directly between Earth and the Sun, we can experience a solar eclipse. If the Moon is just the right distance from us to completely cover the Sun, we can see a total solar eclipse. For any solar eclipse, your location with respect to the moon's shadow will determine the type of eclipse you can experience. Most of North America will experience a partial solar eclipse, where you only see part of the moon cover part of the disk of the sun. The closer you are to the moon's shadow path, the darker it will get. From where I live in Gainesville, Florida, we will see 70% coverage of the sun by the moon. However, if you're anywhere in the darker shadow path, you'll get to experience totality. Look around the edge of the moon, yes. and you're gonna see little, uh, oh, this is so cool. Oh my gosh. Oh, and you're gonna see the diamond ring in a second. Wow. Wow. That's insane. Okay, and. That's amazing. Totality. Okay, take off your shades, take off your shades. Look at the corona. Oh my God, that's so beautiful. Look at that! Oh, oh my god! Wow! wow. wow. Can, can you take a picture? Yeah, you, yeah, you can take a, try taking a picture of it. Wow, that was awesome! During a solar eclipse, you're more tempted to look at the sun. Even a small piece of sunlight shining around the edge of the moon can cause permanent blindness. Therefore, to prevent eye damage, you'll need to wear protective eyewear like this during the partial phase of the eclipse. Or, another safe way to view the eclipse is to use the pinhole camera technique. You basically take two pieces of cardboard, poke a tiny hole in one of them, and with your back to the sun, have the sunlight pass through the hole you just made in the first piece of cardboard, and it will project an image of the eclipse on the second piece of cardboard. Shoe boxes are great for this, but if you have two pieces of cardboard, Holding them about a meter apart is usually a good distance to separate them to get a clear focus. One word of warning, if you have a telescope and want to view the eclipse up close, make sure you have an approved solar filter that is at the entry point of the telescope and not near the eyepiece. Good solar telescope filters are designed to remove 100% of infrared light, 100% of ultraviolet light, and 99.999% of visible light before it gets to the eyepiece. So having the filter at the entry point of the telescope filters out all of the heat and bright sunlight before it gets to the eyepiece. If you ever received a telescope with one of these filters that screws directly onto the eyepiece, toss it in the trash and do not use it. Unfiltered sunlight can cause the eyepiece filter to get extremely hot and crack. This can cause instant blindness if you're looking through the telescope when it cracks. So remember, filter in the front. Okay, so here's a quick rundown of some of the major cities in North America that will experience totality. Keep in mind, the closer you are to the center of the moon's shadow, the longer totality will be. I call those locations centerline. Starting from the south, we have Mazatlan and Durango, Mexico. In the United States, starting with Texas, we have Austin, Waco, Fort Worth, Arlington, Irving, Dallas, Garland, and Plano. We then have Little Rock, Arkansas, and Sykeston, Missouri, and Evansville and Indianapolis, Indiana. In Ohio, we have Dayton, Riverside, Toledo, Akron, and Cleveland. We next have Erie, Pennsylvania, and Buffalo and Rochester, New York. And the eclipse leaves the United States in Montpelier, Vermont. Not to be left out, our friends in Ontario, Canada will see totality in Hamilton, Burlington, 
Oakville, and Kingston. And in Quebec, visitors and residents of Montreal, Longueuil, and Sherbrooke will experience totality from one to as much as three and a half minutes. Lastly, when it comes to traveling to see totality, getting there isn't the problem. It's leaving that will make you pull your hair out. Speaking from personal experience, immediately after totality, be prepared for the most horrific traffic jam you've ever seen. Even though the eclipse is still happening for almost an hour after totality ends, once the fun part is over, most people will get in their cars and drive back home. The sheer numbers of people who will travel to Centerline to watch totality is in the millions. After the 2017 eclipse, my family and I sat in bumper-to-bumper -bumper traffic for hours on the interstate. So my personal recommendation would be that if you have a friend or relative who lives near Centerline, or if you can still find a hotel room, Stay there overnight. By morning, most of the traffic will be gone and you'll have smooth sailing home. All right, my friends, get outside on Monday afternoon, April 8th, and experience the solar eclipse across America. Click on the link in the description for a website listing the specific timings of the eclipse for your area. Before you go, visit our website, theskyaboveus.org. From there, you can watch previous episodes, listen to the Sky Above Us podcast, get the Sky Above Us merchandise, and you can even ask me an astronomical question that I'll answer in a future episode. Solar eclipses are amazing to experience, especially when you remember to have protective eyewear and keep looking up.